All right, so day 21 of the 100 Days of Narration Challenge, which means it's going to be the Mystery Book Challenge number three. So basically, the idea is, am I going to have to explain this every time this comes up? But basically, the idea is, I'm not going to tell you the title of this book, nor the author. Uh, maybe I'll tell you. I'll give you a hint about the author. Um... And uh, if you can guess what it is, uh, private message me over YouTube. You have 24 hours to put in your guess after this video goes up. And um, I will get a name at random out of the people who have guessed correctly. And uh, yeah, uh, they will get a 30 second message from me for whatever they want for those 30 seconds. And because nobody guessed last time for the Mystery Book Challenge last time, um which was uh, how to think about strange things, how to think about weird things, strange things, one of those two anyway. <clears throat> Since nobody guessed that book last week when I did, did this challenge, there'll be two prizes of 30 second messages up for grabs with this one. So um, yeah, 24 hours to message that. Just be sure to check the video and the comments to make sure that uh, I haven't already um, put the answer there because I don't know how long it'll take you take to for people to receive this. Hopefully, you'll receive it in time to put in your guess. Um, but if you don't, sorry, you're out of luck. You're too late. It's over. The contest is over. I'm sorry. I'm so so sorry. Uh so how about that, you Doctor Who? Um. <clears throat> Which has absolutely nothing to do with the book I'm about to read right now. Absolutely nothing. No. <clears throat> Not at all. Not at all. So, let's go ahead and read this book now. And, um, stop at page 91. We'll stop at 91. Uh, oh wait, the clue, the clue. I forgot about the clue. Uh, the clue is, um... God, I've picked a page where um, names appear, so that might be clue enough. But still, <clears throat> the clue is, I've read a book previously by the same author in one of the previous videos. So um, go back and uh, try to find that video and uh, yeah, or what have you. Why would you find that video? Anyway, the author, same person as a previous video. La. <clears throat> Here we go, page 91. Very quiet and gentle me. Oh, sorry. Very quiet and gentle to me. And not a bit stuck up in spite of her brilliance. In fact, she hardly seems aware of it. So when the class reassembled, Matilda went to a desk and began to study a textbook on geometry, which Miss Honey had given her. The teacher, ke the teacher kept a half eye. <clears throat> oh, wow, I'm not doing very well today. The teacher kept an kept half an eye on her. The teacher kept a half an eye on her all the time, and noticed that the child very soon became deeply absorbed in the book. She never glanced up once during the entire lesson. Miss Honeyman, meanwhile, was making another decision. She was deciding that she would go herself and have a secret talk with Matilda's mother and father as soon as possible. She simply refused to let the matter she simply refused to let the matter rest where it was. The whole thing was ridiculous. She couldn't believe that the parents were totally unaware of their daughter's remarkable talents. After all, Mr. Wormwood was a successful motor car dealer, so she presumed that he was a fairly intelligent man himself. In any event, parents never underestimated the abilities of their own children, quite the reverse. Sometimes it was well nigh impossible for a teacher to convince the proud father or mother that their beloved offspring was a complete nitwit. Miss Honey felt confident that she would have no difficulty in convincing Mr. and Mrs. Wormwood that Matilda was something very special indeed. The trouble was going to stop them. The trouble was going to be to stop them from getting over-enthusiastic. And now Miss Honey's hopes began to expand even, even further. She started wondering whether Purr... That's, that's how it ends. It um, not only ends in the middle of a sentence, it ends in the middle of a word... Oh my god. <sighs> Starts in the middle of a sentence and ends in the middle of a word. In the middle of a freaking word. Why would you do that? Why would you end in the middle of a freaking word? Anyway, first pass. 
Can you have you guessed what this book is yet? You might have. <laughs> Why did I laugh? I don't know. Anyway. <clears throat> Second past. Past. Pass. No T at the end. Very quiet and gentle to me, and not a bit stuck up in spite of her brilliance. In fact, she hardly seems aware of it. So when the class reassembled, Matilda went to her desk and began to study a textbook on geometry which Miss Honey had given her. The teacher kept half an eye on her all the time, and noticed that the child very soon became deeply absorbed in the book. She never glanced up once during the entire lesson. Miss Honey, meanwhile, was making another decision. She was deciding that she would go herself and have a secret talk with Matilda's mother and father as soon as possible. She simply refused to let the matter rest where it was. The whole thing was ridiculous. She couldn't believe that the parents were totally unaware of the daughter's remarkable gifts. Sorry, she couldn't believe that the she couldn't believe that the parents were totally unaware of their daughter's remarkable talents. After all, Mr. Wormwood. After all, Mr. Wormwood was a successful motor car dealer, so she presumed that he was a fairly intelligent man himself. In any event, parents never underestimated the abilities of their own children. Quite the reverse. Sometimes it was well nigh impossible for a teacher to convince their proud father or mother that their beloved offspring was a complete nitwit. Miss Honey felt confident that she could have no. Miss Honey felt confident that she would have no difficulty in convincing Mister and Missus Wormwood that Matilda was something very special indeed. The trouble was going to be to stop them get. The trouble was going to be to stop them from getting over enthusiastic. And now Miss Honey's hopes began to expand even further. She started wondering whether. Middle of a sentence. <clears throat> middle of a word. Middle of a sentence. Hmm. Not doing so great on this one. Um, stumbling quite a bit here and there. Reading too fast again. All right. All right. Pull it back. Pull it back. Read a little bit slower. <clears throat> Very quiet and gentle to me, and not a bit stuck up in spite of her brilliance. In fact, she hardly seems aware of it. So when the class reassembled, Matilda went to her desk and began to study a textbook on geometry which Miss Honey had given her. The teacher kept half an eye on her all the time, and noticed that the child very soon became very soon became deeply absorbed in the book. She never glanced up once during the entire lesson. Miss Honey, meanwhile, was making another decision. She was deciding that she would go herself and have a secret talk with Matilda's mother and father as soon as possible. She simply refused to let the matter rest where it was. The whole thing was ridiculous. She couldn't believe that the parents were totally unaware of their daughter's remarkable talents. After all, Mister Wormwood was a successful motor car dealer, so she presumed that he was a fairly intelligent man himself. In, in any event. Parents never underestimated the abilities of their own children. Quite the opposite. Sorry, quite the reverse. I don't know where opposite came from. It's the same kind of word, isn't it? It's a an a but a anagram? No. Analogy? No. Allegory? No. It stops with an A. I know the word. It's going to be in my mind in a second now. A A A A A A A. Use use a thesaurus to do. To do, do, do that, fine. I'll just say alternate word for uh, what was I talking about? Reverse, reverse, quite the reverse. Sometimes it was well, sometimes it was well nigh impossible for a teacher to convince the proud father or mother that their beloved offspring was a complete nitwit. Miss Honey felt confident that she would have no difficulty in convincing Mister and Missus Wormwood that Matilda was something very special indeed. The trouble was going to stop them from getting over. No, sorry. The trouble was going to be to stop them from getting over enthusiastic. And now Miss Honey's hopes began to expand. Sorry. And now Miss Honey's hopes began to expand even further. She started wondering whether. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, 
Um, that was third pass. Um, I still have plenty of time. Wow, that was just ten minutes. Really? That wasn't that wasn't much at all. Um, ugh, burp. Sorry. A burp heard around the internets. Uh, let's go for um, let's go for a fourth pass. Fourth pass. Um, slow it down. Slow it down. Slow it down. Slow down, Edwin. Just take it down a notch. You can do it. You can bring it right down. <clears throat> Very quiet and gentle to me. And not a bit stuck up in spite of her brilliance. In fact, she seemed. Damn it. <laughs> uh, even when slowed down to make mistakes, in fact, she hardly seems aware of it. So when the class reassembled, Matilda went to a desk and began to study a textbook on geometry which Miss Honey had given her. The teacher kept half an eye on her all the time, and noticed that the child very soon became deeply absorbed in her book. In the book, not her book. It's Miss Honey's book, not her book. In the book, she never glanced up once during the entire lesson. Miss Honey, meanwhile, was making another decision. She was deciding that she would go herself and have a secret talk with Matilda's mother and father as soon as possible. She simply refused to let the matter rest where it was. The whole thing was ridiculous. She couldn't believe that the parents were totally unaware of the daughter's remarkable talents. After all, Mr. Wormwood was a successful motorcar dealer, so she presumed that he was a fairly intelligent man himself. In any event, parents never underestimated the abilities of their own children. Quite the reverse. Sometimes it was no sometimes it was well nigh impossible for a teacher to convince the proud father or mother that their beloved offspring was a complete nitwit. Miss Honey felt confident that she would have no difficulty in convincing Mr. and Mrs. Wormwood that Matilda was something very special indeed. The trouble was going to be to stop them from getting over-enthusiastic. And now Miss Honey's hopes began to expand even further. She started, wo she started wondering whether prrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr